In the PTE, you'll need to describe an image like this one. This is the describe image task that we'll be looking at today. As you can see, the image in this question contains a bar graph. On test day, you'll get three to four of these describe image tasks. They could include a graph or graphs, a table, a map, a photo, or a diagram of a process. In this video, I'm going to teach you a simple strategy that you can use to get a 90 out of 90 in the PTE exam, along with showing you a high scoring sample response. Let's do it. For this task, you'll have to describe the main features of this graph in 40 seconds. You can see it says this in the instructions here. Look at the graph below. In 25 seconds, please speak into the microphone and describe in detail what the graph is showing. You will have 40 seconds to give your response. Trying to think of what to say and how to structure your answer can be challenging. Let's look at a method you can use to make answering these questions a little bit easier. This method is called the three by three master plan. It's called that because each part has three steps. I'll show you what I mean. The first part of the method is the three step structure. These steps include introducing the graph, which should take around five seconds, describing the graph, which should take around 25 seconds, and concluding, which should take around another five seconds. Notice that this only adds up to 35 seconds, which gives you a little bit of room in case you go over these suggested timings. The next part of the three by three master plan is the three part pattern for the description. Here you describe the highest, the lowest, and one other aspect of the graph. If you notice additional important points in the graph, you can mention them, but you must make sure to allow time to include your conclusion. This brings us to the last part of the three by three master plan, which is the three point motto. Three important points to keep in mind throughout the completion of the describe image tasks. These are keep to the structure, keep it simple, and keep going. So keep to the structure. This saves time and ensures a response that will meet all the scoring criteria. Remember, introduce, describe, conclude. Next, keep it simple. This is a speaking task. Demonstrate your speaking, not your statistical analysis. Use simple language that you know well. Avoid unfamiliar vocabulary, speak clearly, confidently, and accurately. Finally, keep going. Don't stop. Try not to hesitate or use filter words like um or ah. If you find yourself stumbling on a less familiar word or lose your train of thought, just keep going. Speak at a moderate and consistent pace, not too fast and not too slow. And even speed is crucial for obtaining a good score. Even if you make some mistakes with the content, keep going. Two thirds of your mark is based on how you say what you're saying, not what you're saying. If you'd like to try and answer a describe image question by yourself, click the link in the description. It'll take you to a practice question which also contains a sample answer. Okay, so now that we know the method, let's apply it to this bar graph. Let's begin by introducing the graph. Remember, this was the first step to the three step structure. Here's how you can formulate the first sentence. The bar graph represents the title of the graph plus additional information in the X axis. So for this graph, the introduction could be the bar graph represents the number of statutory holidays observed in various countries in 2023. Note that we need to insert the functional grammar words, the article the and the preposition in but we can also add some additional information from the X axis if we want. Now it says the bar graph represents the number of statutory holidays observed in various countries in 2023, including the Philippines, Sri Lanka, and the United Kingdom. A line graph nearly always has time elements such as days, months, or years across the X axis. However, a bar graph or bar chart can have practically anything plotted along the x-axis, and very often this information doesn't appear in the title. However, if appropriate, you can add this information like we've done here in this introduction. 
When listing elements, it is always best to list three, using the conjunction AND before the final element. In this case, we have a list of three countries with the conjunction AND. We always list things in this way, both in speaking and in writing. Also note how some countries, but only a very small number, require us to use the definite article THE in both speaking and writing. Let's just take some time to recap those two important language points, because these are two language points that test takers often struggle with in describe image. The first was lists. When listing, always use commas to separate items and AND to separate the last item. Like this, the Philippines, Sri Lanka, and the United Kingdom. Bread, milk, and eggs. Don't stress the word AND, but be sure that you do say it. A dozen eggs, two tomatoes, and cheese. Notice how we pronounce AND as END, a weak, unstressed sound. Men, women, and children. The other seemingly small grammar point that trips many test candidates up is the use of articles THE and A. If you find articles challenging, don't worry if you make mistakes. Keep calm and keep going. In the describe image task, fluency and pronunciation are more important than small grammatical irregularities. Let's keep going. We've done the introduction. Next is describing the graph. We should aim to speak for around 25 seconds for this part. Remember the pattern for describing the graph. You should describe the highest, the lowest, and one other element from the graph. We'll start with the highest. In 2023, Nepal had the most statutory holidays of the countries shown on the bar chart, with 35 days. Then the lowest. The United Kingdom and the United States of America had the fewest national holidays, with only 10 days for each of the two countries. We've mentioned the highest and the lowest figures. Let's add another noticeable key point evident in the graph. Can you see one? There are many options. How about this? After Nepal, the country with the next highest number of public holidays was Sri Lanka, with 10 fewer days of holiday in the year. If we still have time available before the crucial 30-second mark, we can add more observations about the data depicted in the graph. This could be something like, this was followed reasonably closely by both India and Kazakhstan, each with 21 national holidays. If you're unsure about the pronunciation of Kazakhstan, choose a different country about which to make an observation. If you find yourself halfway through a sentence with a word with unfamiliar pronunciation approaching, don't worry. Keep calm and keep going. However, it will affect your score if you pause, stumble, or make several attempts at it. Remember, keep calm and keep going. That's the introduction and the description done and dusted. We've just passed the 30-second mark, so we'll move on to a concise conclusion. For this part, we need to make sure that we complete a sentence that begins with IN CONCLUSION. Let's make an overarching general statement. In conclusion, it can be seen that there's substantial variation in the number of statutory holidays ranging from 10 to 35. Let's just read through the full sample response for this describe image question. The bar graph represents the number of statutory holidays observed in various countries in 2023, including the Philippines, Sri Lanka, and the United Kingdom. In 2023, Nepal had the most statutory holidays of the countries shown on the bar chart with 35 days. The United Kingdom and the United States of America had the fewest national holidays with only 10 days for each of the two countries. After Nepal, the country with the next highest number of public holidays was Sri Lanka, with 10 fewer days of holiday in the year. In conclusion, it can be seen that there's substantial variation in the number of statutory holidays ranging from 10 to 35. As you can see, to keep our response under 40 seconds, we didn't need to include the sentence about India and Kazakhstan. This response accurately and thoroughly describes the image and as a result would receive a high score in the content criterion. It would also receive a high score in oral fluency and pronunciation. Well, there we have it. We've worked through a describe image bar graph task. Here's the method one more time. First, the three-step structure, then the three-part pattern, and finally, the three-point motto. 
If you'd like to try and answer a Describe Image question yourself, click the link in the description. It'll take you to a practice question, which also contains another sample answer. In this lesson, we work through a Describe Image practice question together. But remember, I won't be there on test day, and for Describe Image tasks, it can be difficult to think of an answer on the spot. That's why practicing is important. If you're familiar with using the method, you'll be ready to give a great response on test day. Good luck!